Now somebody give God praise in the house. Glory to the name of Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Carter. What a blessing to be able to be here in this missions conference and, um, and be with Pastor Carter and First Lady. Amen. You folks have a very elegant First Lady in this church. Amen. You are very blessed. Hallelujah. And you've got a dynamic pastor in this church. Amen. Aren't you thankful for that? Hallelujah. Uh, what a joy to be able to be here. And um, I, I was looking out that window right there last year. Well, not last year, in, in 2021 when I was here. Um, we had to do a drive-by. Amen. Anybody remember the drive-by? Amen. We had to... Everybody had to bring their faith promise, the ones that wanted to bring it, and they'd drive up. And, and, and I didn't know what was going on, so I, I, I was improvising, and, and I'd see through the window, and I'd see another car, and I'd say, and there's another car coming, amen. We were, we were just winging it, amen. And, uh, but I'm glad you folks are here today. Amen. Praise God. I'm glad you're here today, amen. What a mighty God we serve. I want to say it's also a great joy to be with Brother Hanscom and his wife. They've been missionaries for so many years and, and just a great inspiration, amen, for missions. And, of course, it's always good to see Rachel Drost. That is my um, niece, amen. I almost, I was like, well, Lord have mercy, what is she, amen. <laughs> amen, she's my niece, Amen. And um, her, her dad is my oldest brother, and um, it's not hard to distinguish my brothers from me. It's hard to distinguish my brothers from each other, because they're both bald. Amen. I've got the head of hair. They don't. Amen. But my brother is the oldest brother, and he is a missionary to the country of Mexico, and we were just down there about two weeks ago, and uh, he is the president of the work in Mexico, and uh, they just reelected him with a 98% vote to continue being the president of the work in Mexico. Amen. We're so, we're so proud of him and what God is doing through him. Amen. It is such a joy and an honor to be with Brother Foster. Brother Foster, Bishop Foster, is one of the hardest working pastors that I've ever seen. I literally live about five minutes away from his church, and, uh, and almost every time I drive by, he's there working at the church, a man of vision. If you don't get inspired for revival when you're around, Brother Foster, you ain't ever going to get inspired for revival. Amen. That's just about the truth right there. And I always like to get around Brother Foster because I, I like getting around people that stretch me. Right. Amen. I like people that stretch me and challenge me. Amen. And so it's been a joy and an honor to be able to share this conference with Brother Foster. Amen. And I'm so glad to have my beautiful lady with me. Oh, my Lord have mercy. She has enjoyed Canada. Thank you for making her feel welcome in this place. Amen. And uh, I'm so glad to have her. My wife is a gifted writer, dynamic writer. She has written two books, and uh, we were wanting to be able to get that second shipment in uh, to be able to bring that here, but it did not arrive on time. But we brought her first book, which is called God Eagle, Healing for Damaged Hearts. This is a very good book, a dynamic book. And uh, her second book is uh, Punch the Bully, uh, Dealing with Anxiety. Both books are very dynamic, very good books, and they will bless you. My wife has the God Eagle, and it will be right there in the entrance. And... Um, I, I, I recommend it, highly recommend it, that you take a copy and be able to enjoy 
that book. Amen. Are you ready? You ready? Will you stand for the reading of the word? In Hebrews chapter 11, reading verse 39, all the way to verse 40. Hebrews chapter 11, reading verse 39, all the way to verse 40. And the word of the Lord says, and I'm reading from the King James Version, and then I'll be reading from another version just so that it, it, you'll be able to get a glimpse of something that it says. This is what the word of the Lord says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 39. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, everybody say for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Um, I, I want to read it in the complete Jewish Bible, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 39 and 40. I believe 39 is there. Amen. Uh, because God has planned something better that would involve us. Somebody say involve us. So that only with us would they be brought to the goal. Only with us would they be brought to the goal. Bishop Foster brought such a beautiful message today. And he entitled it, Chosen. I want to be able to use a part of his, well, use his title and add something to that. And that is this, Chosen to Finish. Chosen to Finish. I believe God is going to move in this place in a dynamic way. By the power of the name of Jesus, will you pray right now? Heavenly Father, we thank you. You are such an awesome God. You're such a good God, Lord. I pray, God, that you will move amongst us. We're here, God, with a purpose. We're here under a divine appointment of you, God. This is to be able to further the gospel around the world. I pray by the power of the name of Jesus that your spirit will go forth that your anointing will touch everybody that is listening in this place right now, and that there will be just an amazing move. We will not fail to give you glory. God, I ask you, put the devil to shame and let your name be glorified in this house. In Jesus' name, amen. Now clap your hands to the Lord. Give God a shout of praise in this house right now. Come on now, somebody give God a shout of praise in this house. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Mighty God, mighty God. You may be seated in the presence of all mighty God. Relay races are foot races for teams of four or more in which one runner runs a set distance then passes a tube called baton to the next runner and so on until the distance of the race is complete the team does not finish the race until the last athlete crosses the finish line with the baton everyone on the team is committed to see that that last athlete makes it all the way across the finish line. The responsibility is on everyone, but the pressure to win is on the last athlete. There is no celebration. There is no medals until the last athlete crosses the finish line. 
You don't see one that he ran a certain distance and then he's on the sideline and everybody's patting him on the back. Everybody is engaged until the last runner crosses the finish line. Just like a relay race, we find ourselves in a relay race of faith. Where all the heroes of faith in the Bible and all who have gone before us started the race and handing, hand, handed the baton of faith from one generation to another generation. And we now, the generation that is still alive, we carry the responsibility to finish the work they got started. We're not here to coast. We're here to finish. Amen. I got to say that again. We're not here to coast. We're here to finish. We're here to finish what everybody started before us. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. See, Paul explains the way they have not yet received the promise. The Old Testament believers will not be made perfect without the believers of the new covenant. The phrase be made perfect is a Greek word to leo, which means to be made perfect or complete. The idea is to finish what was started. The faithful believers of the past have not yet been able to be made perfect until we finish the race. In other words, if we don't finish right, they don't get their medal. Praise God. If we don't finish right, they don't get their medal. Because we're all connected together for the win. We're all connected together for the victory. We're all connected together to be able to see the kingdom of God be able to be spread around the world. Glory to God. Many years ago, a man by the name of Bill Dross then became known as Bill Dross the Pentecost. He began the journey in 1930. And then in March 5th of 1979, my grandfather Bill Dross the Pentecost handed the baton of faith to my uncles and my dad. And in September 4th of 2020, my dad handed the baton of faith to my brothers and I. And if the Lord delays his coming, one day my brothers and I will have to turn the baton over to our children. And they will turn it over to their children. But it is something that goes from generation to generation. I cannot mess it up in my generation. I cannot drop the baton in my generation. I've got to keep on preaching what's been handed to me so that the next generation will also be apostolic from the head to their toe. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord right now. Ukarabataya. Even all the men and women of God of the Old and New Testament depend on us to finish what they got started. While they are watching, we are supposed to be working and finishing strong. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, 
the author and finisher of our faith, whom for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and it is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. Uh, it talks about a great cloud of witnesses. A great cloud of witnesses. So who's the great cloud of witnesses? To understand this, we need to look at the previous chapter. And that is Hebrews chapter 11. In that chapter of the heroes of the faith. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the rest of the Old Testament believers. Looked forward with faith for the coming of the Messiah. Hallelujah. They were looking forward for the coming of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And our forefathers had faith to guide and direct them. But God had something better planned that included us. My Lord have mercy. Y'all are going to have to forgive me, but I'm about to go crazy up in this place. I feel the Holy Ghost on me right now. I feel the power of God in this place right now. See, the, the men from old were looking forward to Jesus. But Jesus looked down to our generation. Look to where we are right now. And he said, I've got a better place plan i'm not gonna allow them to be, be able to receive their medal at that time but the baton needs to be turned over to another generation and to another generation so that at the end when the trumpet sounds and jesus comes in the cloud then us together with our forefathers will be able to sell Celebrate the win of revival. My God, have mercy. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord right now. I don't hear you. Clap your hands to the Lord. There they are cheering for us. Oh, if heaven could be opened for us right now, we'd be able to see the saints of old uh, cheering for us, saying, don't give up. Keep on preaching. Keep on praising. Keep on believing. Keep on getting the gospel around the world. Uh, the end is coming. Keep on believing. Keep on preaching. There's a cloud of witnesses that they are seeing what the last day church is going to do. I refuse to drop the ball. I refuse to give up. There's a world that needs to be saved. And we're the church that are going to see the greatest revival around the world. Does anybody believe that with me? up in this place right now somebody give God a shout of praise praise him right now I feel the Holy Ghost moving in this house somebody just praise him we have a divine purpose tell your neighbors say we got a purpose we're not here just to fill a space and we're not here tonight by mistake. We have a divine purpose. Hallelujah. We are following a plan designed by God himself. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6 it says, In him also we have had an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his will. Glory to God. He says we have been predestined. We are not predestined individually. We got to make that clear because there is that doctrine of predestination. Once saved, always saved. 
I believe that is a doctrine that has brought so much confusion in the religious world. But we are not individually predestined. But as a church, collectively, we are predestined. Hallelujah. What are you saying? The church, in the end, wins. We're not a part of a bunch of losers. We're a part of winners. Are there any winners up in this place? I said, are there any victorious people in this house right now? I need some victorious people to give God praise in this house. The church has been destined. The church was built for a purpose. In Acts chapter 13, in verse 48, for thus has hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee for a light of the Gentiles, and thou shalt, uh, uh, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the uttermost parts of the earth. God created the church to demonstrate his light uh, and his salvation to the world. We're not here to become a social club. Praise God. We're here to be a light to the world. Amen. Amen. We're here to be a light of salvation to people. That mentality of we four and no more, it don't rock anymore. We got to have a mentality of we've got to be light in the midst of darkness. We've got to be a hope in a place where there is no hope. And people need to know that there is hope in Jesus Christ. Somebody that believes that give God praise. See God... God used his people to demonstrate his power through them. Through them. Can you imagine? God actually wants to demonstrate his power through you. I only had pastor say something. I'm going to go over here. Amen. Praise God. God has to demonstrate his power through you. Glory to God. And sometimes we're waiting and we're saying, oh, God, demonstrate your power. And God's saying, let it flow through you. Let it flow through you. Because that's where the testimony is at. That's where the demonstration is at. When it flows through you. Let me tell you what God wants to do in this church. God wants to release miracles to become a habit in the church. A normal thing in the church. Something that happens when you're on the job. Something that happens when you're in school. Why? So that when God does a miracle, it points right up to Jesus. Oh, somebody give God praise right there. Exodus chapter 9 and verse 16. He says, I have sent you to show my power in you. That my name be declared in all the earth. He said to Israel, he said, I'm going to show my power in you. I am going to flow through you. That the world will only be able to say, it's God that's with them. It's God that moves with them. And that's what God is positioning the church right now. That we move from just being bench warmers. To be active in the kingdom of God. To demonstrate God's power to the world. Let me tell you something. When they see the power of God, they can't deny the power of God. Somebody give God a shout of praise right now. Come on now, I need somebody giving God a shout of praise. See, God uses his church to demonstrate his wisdom. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. 
that the manifold wisdom of God may be known, uh, may be known, be made. Now, amen. Sorry, my Spanish brain took over. Amen. Known through the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. He said, let it be known through the church. Let them know that something powerful is happening through the church. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. And I also say unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It shall not prevail against the church in Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 behold I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you have you forgotten that the Bible says in Romans chapter 16 and verse 20, and the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Glory to God. Don't you get it? Uh, he's saying, I'm going to do it through my church. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate my power through my church. Uh, and there ain't no demon in hell that can hold my church back. Uh, somebody needs to learn to tread on the devil again. Uh, somebody needs to put the devil under your feet uh, by the power of the name of Jesus. Uh, I dare you to get back home. Uh, open up the door of your house and say devil I give you five seconds to get out of my house depression's gotta leave sickness has got to leave somebody give God praise right now I don't hear you give God praise right now somebody begin to put the devil under your feet I said, somebody begin to put the devil under your feet. I need a mama putting the devil under your feet. I need a daddy putting the devil under your feet. The enemy has come against your children. You need to rise up with an attitude. Let the devil know you ain't messing with my kids anymore. You're not messing with my grandkids. We're going to have victory in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout right now. I feel the Holy Ghost up in this place. I'm telling you, let me tell you something. Uh, my, my brothers and I, we weren't going in the right direction, but I had a praying mama. Oh God, I had a praying mama that she would anoint our clothes uh, and she would anoint the door handle and she'd tell devil, you ain't messing with my kids. Uh, they're going to be preachers of the gospel and I stand here today. I'm a preacher of the gospel because I had a mama that decided to put the devil under her feet. Uh, it's time for the church to rise up. It's time for the church to take its place of authority and let the devil know we're getting the gospel around the world we're going to preach it until something happens can I have an apostolic shout right now can I have a Pentecostal shout right now uh, raise your hands I feel the Holy Ghost Ikaralarabataya. Come on now, praise him. Praise him, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. He says, he says, upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it 
shall not prevail against it. But then he says to Peter, he says, and I give to thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He says, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. I always viewed the keys as just the Acts 2.38 message of making it into heaven that those are the keys. And yes, they are the keys. But he makes those keys active. Praise God. What do you mean he makes them active? He says, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth uh, shall be loosed in heaven. What's he saying? These are active keys. In other words, uh, you've got the keys to access everything heaven has. Praise God. When we checked into the hotel, they gave us a key for the hotel room. The moment they gave us the key, they gave us the authority to use everything that's in that room. I could take a four hour shower if I want to because I've got the key of authority. I can make as many pots of coffee that I want to because I've got the key of authority. But if I didn't have the key and I access the room, then I'm violating something. But because I've got the key, I've got the authority to be in that room. And everything that room offers, I have the authority to be able to use it. Oh, somebody better come and arrest me. I feel like preaching up in this place. I said, I feel like preaching up in this place. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. You got the key, baby. You got the key to heaven. You got the key to loosen things. You got the key to bind things. It's time you use the keys. Oh, somebody better shout right there. I said it's time for you to use the keys. You need to bind depression. You need to bind poverty. You need to bind every demonic spirit that has risen up against your family. And you need to loosen revival. Loosen miracles. Loosen signs. In the name of Jesus. Somebody give God a shout of praise right now. Ah, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Father, open our eyes right now. Open our eyes right now. In the name of Jesus, open our eyes right now. Hallelujah. The access to the kingdom is not just for a selected few. The access to the kingdom is for every child of God. Hallelujah. That's why the Lord Jesus said, greater works shall you do do greater work shall you do it's time for the church to activate the kingdom of God here on earth miracles are in your life right now healings are in your life right now but you've got to activate them you got to put them to work in the mighty name of Jesus Amen got to put them to work you got to access the keys every blessing is locked up according to how you use the keys in the name of Jesus and God does it because through you he wants to display his power Amen. glory to the name of Jesus 
Glory to the name of Jesus. I don't care how old you are. The moment you allow for God to flow through you, you now become a conduit of God's power. God did not save you for you to contain everything on the inside. Revival is in your soul. And it's to be able to spread out of your soul and reach to other people. Hallelujah. If you can learn to activate the kingdom of God, you don't even have to worry about bringing people to church. They'll be coming to church on their own. See, let me tell you something. The moment miracles start to happen in this place, uh, that rumor will get spreading all over St. John. Uh, you need a miracle? You need to go to Mission Point uh, because there's miracles uh, that are happening in that place. Uh, I'm believing God uh, that he's going to bless this church uh, with that one miracle that will put the church on the map. Uh, that all of a sudden people say that church up there on the hill that's a church of miracles uh, that's a church of deliverance uh, that's a church of the power of God I wish I had an apostolic in this place that believes it uh, somebody give God a shout of praise right now why why, 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 why? I believe that in these latter days, we're going to see greater power than what the disciples saw. We're going to see greater anointing than what the, the, the apostles saw. I believe it. You know why? Because we are the finishers. And because we're the finishers, we've got to finish strong. Glory to God. We got to finish strong. I got to say it again. We got to finish strong. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So thankful to the Lord for my heritage. I've been so blessed by God. I don't want to drop the ball. I really do. That's like, that, that's, that, that's not even acceptable in my life. I hate it when I see generations that have come from one generation to the other and then all of a sudden in one they go charismatic. I absolutely hate that. I sometimes feel like grabbing them guys and giving them a good slap and say you did wrong because it's thievery. It's deception. Hallelujah. And so what God has placed in me, I've got to place it also in my children for them to become apostolic as well. And I'm thankful they're both apostolic to the core. Amen. They love God. They're in ministry. They love God. It's beautiful. I'm thankful to the Lord for that. Amen. But I had last year in the month of November, there was a brother that called me up and he said, he said, Brother Dross, he said, have you ever taken your son to that place where your grandfather in Cali, Colombia saw the vision of the valley full of fire? And I said, no, I've never taken him there. He said, I feel that you need to take him. He said, you need to take him. He needs to go and he needs to see that. Amen. And on top of that, he said, in fact, I'm going to sponsor it. He said, I'm going to send you money for you to be able to take your son to that place, amen. I want you to show video number one, amen. Video number one, that right there is the mountain of three crosses. Those are the three crosses right there. And uh, it overlooks the valley of the Cauca Valley, which that's the Cauca Valley right there of Cali, Colombia. It is a large valley. It's a big valley. And, of course, they, those trees weren't there before. You could, When the trees aren't there, you could see all the way around and it's just such a beautiful sight. And uh, so I took my son up there. Uh, let's do picture number one. Amen. I took my son up there. That's my boy. He's taller than me. Amen. And I'm pretty tall. What are y'all laughing at? Amen. Everybody's a legend in their own mind. Amen. Praise God. That's my boy right there. 
And I took my boy up on that, up on that mountain. And as we stood in that place where my grandfather stood in 1964. And he saw a vision of the valley full of fire. And as I was explaining it to my son, and I was telling him about it, all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, it's time to get that fire burning again in this valley. And I said, okay, Lord. So I didn't, I didn't know what we were going to do. So one of the things I do is God uses me for crusade. People filled with the Holy Ghost. And, and so I started thinking about it. And, and the president of that country, the president of the work, when I reached out to him, he said, he said uh, th this isn't a good time for this. It isn't a good time. See, see watch this. Whew, Lord, watch this. God gives keys. He gave the keys to humanity, gave the keys of the kingdom of heaven to humanity. That's where I have an issue with God. Why did he give it to humanity? Because I've met too many people that locked the kingdom up instead of releasing the kingdom. Are you a kingdom locker upper or are you a kingdom releaser? Praise God. Too many people wanted to hoard it and, and hold it for themselves. And that's what that man was. He was saying, we don't, we don't need this in Colombia. But I couldn't get away from it. We're talking about just in November. I couldn't get away from it. I was like, Lord, you're going to have to do something. So I, I asked my brother Daniel, can you go down to Colombia and just scope the land, scope Cali, and, and tell me where, if, where's the place we can have this crusade and everything. When he got down there, only the presbyter knew that he was in Cali. Only the presbyter knew. Nobody else knew. And all of a sudden, one day, the pres uh, somebody calls the presbyter and says, Brother, uh, is there a Brother Drost in Cali right now? And, and he said, yeah, there he is. They said, we have a word from the Lord for him, and we're coming. And so they came, and they met with my brother. And when they met with my brother, the sister said, the Lord woke me up. And told me I had to come and give a word to you. And she said, your brother, God has placed a vision in his life about the valley of Cauca. And she said, even though he has met up with resistance, the Lord says, move forward on the plan. For he will remove every resistance out of the way. Praise God. So my brother calls me up. He's like, Mark, nobody knew about this. And the presbyter, he, he's like, what, what is it that your brother's, what, what is it that he's feeling? Amen. And my brother says, my brother's feeling in the Holy Ghost to bring a crusade to Cali. Well, that guy called all the other presbyters and said, they want to bring a crusade. We need to write a letter. Amen. President got mad at me. He said, why'd you jump over my authority? I said, I haven't even talked to anybody. Amen. But they wrote a letter and they said, you need to come and uh, we, we want to have this crusade and everything. And God started moving things. Let me tell you something. When God said to have a crusade, I didn't have not one cent to my name for a crusade. Amen. Not one cent. But God started just blessing and blessing and blessing. I've always said God's will, God's bill. Amen. He'll take care of it. Praise God. He'll take care of it. I said he'll take care of it. Amen. He'll take care of it. When you move in God's will, he'll, he'll take care of the situation. You can never outgive God. And so as we started moving forward, I called my brothers up. Amen. Side number, number whatever, the picture, number two. That, those are my brothers. Amen. You see how they're bold? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I called my brothers up and I said to my brothers, I said, I can't do this by myself. I've got to have my brothers with me. I said, we've got to do this. This is part of our heritage. We've got to see revival in Colombia. Amen. My grandfather saw revival in Colombia. And God is saying, we need to ignite the fire again in that valley of Cauca. 
And so we began to organize the crusade. I really thought that we were only going to have about 6,000 people show up to the crusade. What blew my mind is that God brought over 14,000 people to this crusade. People hungry for a move of God. the crusade it was it was a tent structure where the outside all the way around all the way into the parking lot there was a multitude of people all the way around it literally blew our minds hallelujah i want you to play the clip this is the last night this is the last night where people are getting the baptism of the holy ghost in two days of crusade god filled 7,198 with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Somebody ought to shout about that. I said somebody ought to shout about that right now. Somebody give God praise right there. 7,198 filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That is the greatest number of outpouring of the Holy Ghost in Latin America up to this point. To God be the glory. But we're not done because the world's got to be reached. This is just the beginning of revival. Somebody give God praise right now. Somebody give God praise right now. Give God praise. I don't hear you giving praise right now. Give God praise right now. You and I are the finishers. We've got to see the greatest revival that has ever been seen in history. But watch this. Watch this. Yeah, God's doing it around the world. God's already starting, amen. Crusades are starting up. In fact, in fact, they're in Colombia. They got so pumped. They've, they've, been, they've been having an outburst, a revival in the whole country to the point that the president, which is now a new president, amen. God did remove, amen. Thank you, Jesus. He did exactly what he said he was going to do, amen. He removed the one that was a disturbance and put a new one in. And this man came to me and he said, Brother Dross, whatever you feel to do in this country, he said, you've got liberty to do it. We're already programming another crusade for next year where we are believing we will have 40,000 in attendance and God is going to blow our minds uh, with all the folks that are going to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But I want you to understand something. There's something that gets me in my spirit because I look at America and I look at Canada that have sent missionaries around the world that have planted seeds around the world and I say God yes we want we want revival in the world but we also want revival in Canada and I believe that the time will come where we're going to see crusades in Canada where thousands upon thousands will be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost I wish I had a Canadian that can believe with me right now I'm believing God for a great revival in this country by the power of the name of Jesus can anybody believe that with me right now Lift up your voice, lift up your voice. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. You got to understand something. Every dollar is a seed. Every dollar is a seed. Who I feel the Holy Ghost. Every dollar is a seed. Every soul that has left the Atlantic District and have been missionaries has been a seed. They're seeds. Where do you think that, that growth is going to come back to? Where is that increase going to come back to? Yes, God is giving revival in other places.
But it's time for us to put a demand on the seed. It's time to put a demand on the seed. Begin to say, God, we want to see it here. We want to see it in Canada. We want to see revival. God, I want to see, I want to see my kids saved. I'm believing God for a revival of backsliders and prodigal sons that are going to come into this house. Uh, hallelujah. That this building won't be able to give uh, room enough uh, because this city is full of backsliders. Uh, this city is full of prodigal sons. Uh, and I believe that God's going to bring a revival in this church of backsliders uh, and of prodigal sons and daughters. Uh, I wish I had a mama that believes that with me right now and, uh, and a daddy and a grandparent that can believe that with me right now hallelujah does anybody believe that God is going to send a revival of prodigals and backsliders if you believe it will you give God praise right now we are the finishers I want everybody to stand right now I feel the Holy Ghost moving we are the chosen finishers Chosen to finish. Chosen to finish. Arabo Kotar Yalabasaya. Kirabo Kotor Yalabasanda Yarabakataya. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I feel the heartbeat of God right now in this place. I need somebody to reach out to God right now. I need somebody to cry out to God right now. There's a stirring in the spirit. There's a stirring in the Holy Ghost right now. There's a stirring right now in this place. Somebody's coming alive right now. Somebody's getting their fight back right now. Saying, I need my freedom in the Holy Ghost. I need intercessors lifting up their voice right now. Come on, intercessors. Come on, prayer warriors. I need prayer warriors lifting up their voice right now. The Holy Ghost is moving in this place. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, Rabakataya, Rabosaya. There's a burden stirring inside of somebody right now. There's a burden, there's a burden. There's a burden stirring inside of somebody right now. Will you respond to that? Will you respond to that burden right now? In the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Somebody is feeling to get out of their comfort zone. Do it right now. We're about to explode in this house. Power of God's about to explode in this place. Somebody get out of your comfort zone right now. If you got to shout, shout. Do it now in the name of Jesus. Do it now in the name of Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Iko robo sadaya. Irabo ko sadaya la bataya la bo sadaya rabaka. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Mighty God. Rabo Shaya. Ikarala Botaya Rabo Shandaya. Akarabata. Hallelujah, they're still moving of the Holy Ghost right now. Come on now, somebody reach out to God right now. There's a shifting in the spirit. 
Some of you have gotten to this point right there in your spirit, but it's time to break through. It's time to break through right now in the name of Jesus. It's time to break through. Somebody's tapping in to your dreams right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If it's appropriate, will you grab your neighbor's hand and lift it up right now if it's appropriate. Begin to pray for them in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray for them in the Holy Ghost. I feel miracles being released right now. I feel miracles being released right now. Now, by the authority of the Word of God and by the power that's in the name of Jesus, Lord, release miracles. Release healing in this house. Release healing by the power of the name of Jesus. I command your sickness to leave your body. I command pain to leave your body right now. In the name of Jesus. There you go. There you go. Come on now.